Hello everybody, I want to get into this lesson today and uh, we're going to shut off the camera today because some of what I've got on the screen overlaps uh, this camera area and I don't need to play my guitar for this one so I'm going to disappear here and play the Invisible Man um, just like this. Alright, there we go. So that being said, let us get over to our, great, our lesson for today and actually start here. So, today um, what we're discussing is my case for why I think the guitar is tuned for the key of C. Even though it's tuned in uh, to a low E string, the fretboard setup is set for the key of C. Um, not totally. I mean, obviously you can move scale shapes anywhere and play all scales on your fretboard, but I want to show you how the... Um, the layout is uh, really censored on the key of C. So let's get into it. So the first thing we have to understand is where my um, thesis or idea here is coming from. That is using the pentatonic shape. And this is also to show you how the magic of the pentatonic shape and how just three simple pentatonic shapes can teach you about the entire fretboard. So that being said, which pentatonic shape do we want to use? We want to use this shape here because this shape facilitates our uh, major, I'm sorry, right here, major and minor shapes. Um, this comes from cage, we'll discuss that in a second, but you can see here the uh, minor chord shape here, um, also known as the E, uh, the derivative from, the, um, from caged, for those who don't know, uh, comes from the open chords that you learn on the fretboard. So this shape as an open chord open E would be E minor, so this is the E shape, and this shape would be a G shape chord. Um, we're considering it here on the fifth fret, but either way, um, so that's like, you know, the A minor, and this is the C minor, but either way, for cage, this would be the E, and this would be the G shape. E shape, G shape. So, um, that's why we want to use this uh, pentatonic shape. Um, also, you know, this shape is one of the first ones you use. It's what you tend to, you know, teach a student or you may have learned um, is what you visualize for tons of rock solos, very popular solos. Um, just to name a couple artists, probably David Gilmore and Alex Lifeson and a couple others. Um, you can cover quite a few of their solos. Considering this box, there's more to their you know, repertoire, obviously, and any good guitarist, especially a professional guitarist, is more than this shape, but this is where we tend to start, and many of us get locked into, accidentally, um, or stall here, like I did for many, many years. Um, but, uh, so this is the shape we're going to consider as, like, the main pentatonic shape today, and so many of the blues riffs are, are right out of this one. Now, there's a very similar shape we could have used, and in some instances, this is called the number one shape. I wanted this to be, you know, this was so interesting to me. I thought this has got to be the one shape, but it's actually, if you consider caged, it's not. Now, I also I have two numbers up above the same scale here, um, and the um, the number four and the number three comes from this. Uh, depends on. The number of this scale, to me, which pentatonic is this? Is this the number one pentatonic? Because there's five pentatonic shapes, right? And we're only dealing with this one. Which number is it? Um, which doesn't really matter for today's lesson, but it just was, uh, it occurred to me once I was trying to think about, well, why isn't this shape the one we could use? And I'll go get, a, get to that in a second. Anyways, the number depends on which, if you're considering starting from minor or major, if we use this, consider this, you know, C is the one, A is the two, G is the three, E is the four, and D is the five in caged. And these pentatonic numbering conventions, to me, come from caged. That's from, from what I've seen when I researched also. Um, not just for me, actually, what I researched. And so if you consider this from the major root, this is the three, C, E, G, G is the three. So um, if you consider it from the minor, this same shape from our minor uh, chord, um, series, then this is the four. This would be the E shape, C A G E. Now the same thing here. If we consider this shape, 
um, even though you can put the A in here and it'll work well, you, you're kind of, you're playing this note and not this note, you're not getting this note. So you're technically using this shape, not this shape. This shape is for a root here and a root here. So you're getting the uh, A minor chord shape if this was down at the open strings. So this is the two. Uh, the shape number two, if you're considering for minor, this is same pentatonic is also can some people will call it shape one because they're considering it for major. But most people consider pentatonics minor. Everyone's kind of, you know, most rock solos play from pentatonic minor and uh, some from pentatonic major, of course. But I think the majority of the ones we learned first, at least the ones I learned first, were pentatonic minor and that's my understanding of this pentatonic for a long time was it's just a minor scale but it's a minor and a major scale and it can be used for both um there's a better shape you can use for major for sure but this one shape cover does cover both with one chord and this shape uh, covers both i believe all shapes will cover one and the other but um for different applications and, and you know we're not we can't go down that road of teaching the full pentatonic and cage lesson here. So this is why I got this, you know, no on this one and a yes on this one. And why we're using this shape and not this shape because of the caged system. So I think we're understood there. Let's move on to our next slide here. But uh, just to recap, make sure you get it. And then uh, we've got an example pentatonic down on our fretboard here. as so you can, you know, for anyone who's was totally new and lost. This is how it lays out on the fretboard. I'll give it a play here really quick. Well, it might be a touch loud here, but turn that down a bit. Starting from the fifth fret, just as it's pictured on the diagram here. So E string, fifth fret, eighth fret, five, seven on the A string, next string, D string, five, seven, five, seven, Five eight, five eight. Okay, and so moving on there, sheet number two. <clears throat> so we understand <clears throat> minor and major. Oh, one other thing I wanted to go over. That's why I was stalling. The cool thing about this shape as well is notice that here you've only you only get two roots. Here you get three roots, and not only that. The roots are on the low string, so we get the maximum amount of chord availability. I mean, chords start from low notes, so it even makes more sense too to use the shape that has the root on the low sixth string or the low E string um, versus this one here, this shape that uses the A string as the lowest. So because we're using the E string, we get three roots per chord, which I think is kind of neat. And, I really just stumbled on that this morning. I mean, kind of probably always known it in the back of my mind, but it never really was on the front of my mind that you get three roots per, per each um, major or minor, which I think is neat. Let's kind of hear that really quick because I thought it was kind of musical when I played it. I'm going to play the minor roots first. <laughs> and then these sound musical together because that is the six and the one the uh natural major and minor um you could consider that as natural major and minor or it's just the basically um a pair the pairs these pairs work together um it could be the you could have considered that i was playing what a minor and c basically an a root and a c root but because of the other chords that was the other notes added in, it became A minor and C major. Now that pair could be six minor, one major, 
or could have been three and five. Those work as a pair. And we're gonna see this later if this doesn't make any sense. And for beginners, you don't have to worry about this. This is trying to also incorporate the uh, my more intermediate uh, people. And could also consider the two and the four. These are pairs that go together, um, major and minor pairs. Remember there's a, and that's the relationship these uh, are come from modal explanations um, six and two, Aeolian and Ionian, natural major and natural minor are both like the neutral, your basic major and basic minor scales. Dorian and Phryg Dorian, sorry, Dorian and Lydian, Dorian minor, Lydian major, are a pair that are the brighter, brighter minor and brighter major. Phrygian and Mixolydian, the three and the five, are uh, the darker minor and the darker major. So that's how these uh, minor major pairs work. And so when we're placing it here on the neck and in consideration of the key of C, we get the um, natural major and natural minor right here, but that's coming up. So let's get on to sheet number two here. Before we get to that, we've got to um, consider our, we, we've gone over this major and minor and we want to break this to we want to add in these gut notes five plus two equals seven a diatonic scale is seven a pentatonic scale is five notes so we want to get to the diatonic scale all we have to do is add in two notes and now we want to break this scale apart to know how and where we're the method to adding in these two notes these two notes are going to be there's going to be two notes added inside here in this square and on the outside here of this square I kind of should have outlined. I kind of will do just for the hell of it because it's kind of bugging me. Even though this is part of the preparation that could have gone on before the lesson here. Let me go to um, draw a border. Let me draw a border like this and then like that. Awesome. And like this. Cool. A little bit of a highlight there. We're going to add in the gut notes on the inside. And you know what I also could have, I guess I could have done this and done this. We're gonna be somewhere on the outside here as well. We're gonna add, we're gonna add in the notes on the outside here. And we're gonna add in our notes on the inside of this shape. And this shape is just gonna simply copy the, well, uh, this one above, okay? So that being said, um, let's get to doing that. I think I've said everything I need to say here and here. Once again, we've got our shape on the fretboard that we're going to be, once this is put together, this is what it'll equal, you know, basically those. I think you guys get that. Let's move on and discover this scale shape here as number one. And we'll, uh, cleared it out of the fretboard there, but it's going to appear again. In the next slide, so what we have here is the um, gut notes of Aeolian. Well, we're going to call it Aeolian, but that screws everybody up because then you start saying, well, what modes? What are we talking about modes here? It has that name because of the, everyone considers this the minor shape. If we, I could have also said Ionian here if I was considering it this. But So let's not call it any, let's just call it scale shape number one. And we've added in some gut notes here. There's only two, remember two to get to seven diatonic notes. And on the inside here, you we've got um, two colors here to show because these notes are two different notes. And if we consider this, uh, if we were considering this scale from the major root, we would be adding in at the brown note is our seven, seven and one, right? Because this these are our ones, one for minor, or this would be our starting note in major, our one. So this would be adding in our seven and our four. If with this we were considering this a minor scale, we would be adding in a six and a two at the same spot as a six. And this would be a two, because remember now this is our one for minor, so that would be a two, three, four, five, six, right? And, um, 
do 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 you know i want to go back i'm sorry about it to everybody but these things just i have ac ocd or something acdc i have acdc <laughs> i have acdc too but uh going back here this reminds me that uh when i was talking about these root shapes just something i wanted to say that one two three four five from pentatonic and you're back to the root so you got one two three four five and you're back to the roots so for the example here one two three four five one two three four five one just wanted to show you that i thought that was kind of cool all right back to this so we jumped ahead here so we've got our root here or i'm sorry our um our gut notes are in place and they, they're on the inside here. And you notice that also uh, compared to the next scales that we do, these are have a, a balance of left and right inside of this. And on the hanging on this one, it's also left and right. We have the, we'll call this the upper and the lower, even though as you get these translated into your fretboard visualization, this may be not the way you call it. Just for this sake, we'll just call this, um, upper left, lower right. Here we have the lower left, upper right, and the copy right here. And we went over what those notes are. So basically we have it right there and we plug it into our fretboard and we have this shape right here. So once you, these get clinked back together here, this is what the pattern looks like. And I've also let you know that we're considering this the one, so therefore this is the six. And this comes from Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. So this is the Do, this is the La of that. And we can move on. So the neat thing is also, before we move on, let's see where this is placed for the key of C. If you want to consider this the key of C, that's always going to be the one um, where the plus sign is. Notice this, that from the octave here, or, or not the octave, from the open strings here, we have one, two, three, uh, open area, open frets for now, and then our scale starts at this note right here, our shape starts. And then we have one, two, three, and we're back at the open, the octave point from the open strings here. So that tells me this is very nicely centered on the fretboard. This is our, we also went over, this is our balanced, our considering the key of C, this is our neutral um, set of major and minor, natural major, natural minor. This is why they're called natural, natural minor scale. No one really calls it the natural major scale, but I do because it's a pair. So, um, kind of interesting to can, you know keep that in your consideration that the natural scale, not the darker version of major and minor or the lighter version of major and minor, are right here in the middle. So let's move on. Now we're gonna just take a second pause here. We gotta get the door closed. Let's see, get a uh, some noise out of here. Okay. So moving on from there, we've got the uh, let's plug in a new set of two notes here, and we're this time we're gonna put them on this side. So notice the difference between the uh, keep your eyes over here. We're gonna notice the difference before everything was on, uh, had a weird, weird, or a balance on every side. Now everything, each one of these is kind of uh, shifted to one side, but then there's a balance between both of them because on this one, our gut notes on the inside are to the left. Our gut notes on the outside are to the right. Kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And makes it somewhat memorable. And by the way, like these four notes are the exact same as these four notes. This is an octave pattern here. Excuse me. Once again, as well, considering from the major or from the minor, it's the same thing. You have a six and a two. Um, if you're considered this major, these notes are that we're hanging here, the six and the two and the seven and the four. And the, um, you know, and they, they, they fall out in, in the same way. Notice the, uh, the six is on top of the two and the four is on top of the seven. It's the same thing with the Aeolian, the 
six is on top of the two and the uh, four is on top of the seven okay so that's kind of neat I thought um, whoops so there we are with this uh, Phrygian shape and let's plug them both back in we'll plug our original one we just did and this one into the fretboard and we get this I use some uh, also I wanted to mention here back with Aeolian once I added it into the scale we can omit the uh, the learning of these um, interval colors you know exactly what these uh, plug-in notes are can stay up here and we just need to know this the general shape that we've learned down here on the fretboard so we do that over here with Phrygian the same thing oh uh, well because what I'm trying to elucidate here is here's a, the pentatonic shape and you don't get this if you use all these colors. You've got the pentatonic shape here, number one, and now once again, pentatonic shape number two, a third or a second pentatonic shape. Ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm letting you know that there's three. Um, so what we have here is um, this um, scale shape. It's got a name because if we consider them minor, the three is in. Uh, the modal progression of the scale following one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian. You'll have to see another lesson to understand all that if that's all alien to you right now. So the three is Phrygian, so that gets commonly called the Phrygian shape, but you could even consider this from the major root here, the five, the Mixolydian shape. Anyways, none of that makes really any difference right now just some naming conventions, but let's just call it a shape right here. And so we've got our, but it stands, the, also the interesting thing is this, these, this pair of, you know, of this one scale shape that uses this major and minor pair is the, also happens to be both of the darker scales, the darker minor and the darker major, darker than the normal major and minor um, mood wise so you know could well, I can almost hear that but um, yeah, I'm gonna skip that for now um, let's move on to Dorian but for, for time sake you guys can practice that by playing play this scale shape with an E root playing a low E note playing and you're gonna hear a uh, it's a kind of well, I guess what I'd want to say is uh, if you played this scale shape with, um, you'd have to move this over. Let's say you moved all these scale shapes over so that these minor roots were on the E note. So you play a low E and play this shape, it's going to sound standard minor, where if you play then, you play this shape, it's going to sound a little bit more some people say Egyptian or Latin or some people just think it's darker it's gonna have a little more of a, an aggression or just a darker sound to it compared to the next scale that we show if you put that on E it would have a lighter both major and minor would sound lighter anyways and for the major in that case you would um, you could use low E you could put it mounted so there's a G note playing whatever you mount this is whatever drone note, low drone note you would want to have ringing out so you can get a keyboard and you know click the sustain and just ring out one a note of your choice and then you mount this at that note to hear these different um, scales but some people are getting confused by that right now so let's just move on um, because modal understanding is really a neat key to this but you don't have to think about that at all to see what I'm saying here especially since we're just talking about the you know is this fretboard you know is there a relationship to the key of C and I think this is what it is so now we've we've done the same thing with Dorian so here we are back at um, let's say like uh, going back to the Aeolian shape we've got the um, the the original shape that we are comparing all these two and we just see we all we did was move the yellow over this one and, and let's take a look at that um real quick if we consider aeolian for phrygian all we do is move the seven and the two 
over that way. We went from in here, we moved it here, and we moved it from there over to one side, the lower right side. Now, if we go back to Aeolian and we look at the, this second scale shape that shall remain modally nameless, we just we're going to watch this yellow move over here, and it the yellow to move to the upper. So see that how that's kind of neat. This one moves over here now. We're, so now we're kind of shifted to the right side. We could you could consider this the brighter side. You could consider this right here the darker side and you could consider this a balance between light and dark you see how see where, where I'm coming from or consider this on if you're just considering this square shape here you have a balance of light and dark whereas in Phrygian you're over here on the lower right side for the the dark side and the uh, the dark side of the moon and the bright side up here so that's where I'm coming from with these uh, seeing how like there's a the geometry has a similarity to the explain the mood explanation which I think is pretty pretty wild um, and very memorable it makes this stuff to me very all, all the way I easily memorize this stuff or it locks into my brain because everything because all the ideas lock together the the shapes on the fretboard lock together with the moods that you're expressing and that's why it makes it memorable to me so we plug this into the fretboard and we've got a shape down here now the ultimate understanding here is that once you plug these three shapes in you now have every single note of the major scale on the fretboard nothing is left out all you need is three pentatonic shapes and the gut note understandings to get to the complete major scale and when you're navigating the major scale on your fretboard aside from a navigational um, understanding I'm going to get to in a future lesson right? so that I've already covered here actually but we'll use this we'll expand on this to cover it again um, you can just by using these three shapes, you can navigate the entire fretboard with this understanding. So I could theoretically, I'll pick up the guitar again here, and I'll start in the blue shape here. I'm in the gray. a good segue to the final slide here the octave so you know this is like huge to me this was the big summation of this lesson um not a lot of fireworks going off obviously but uh, this is the big deal you know your your natural major and minor your one and your oh, i'm sorry your six minor and one major your two minor and four major and your three minor and five major all as pairs, uh, pentatonic pairs here on the Freddie board. And that's just really cool. Now, the reason that you don't see this is because of this little quirk right here where this blue shape and this green shape are overlapping each other. So that's why this, is, if you're looking at this, like, wait a minute, how come I never saw that? This doesn't make this can't be possible. I, I never saw this because many, this, when I started learning all this stuff, I started thinking about this shape and this shape. And I always used to think of them as separate shapes, not even realizing these are connected like this shape. So right here, what I'm trying to show is here's the blue shape right here. Here's the green shape right here. When you go across the 12th fret, they're actually connected. And so if you, you know, this, here we go, this plus this, equals this master shape right here and I'm using this box this is the same exact box when you put them together 
it's just one box right here and of course it's uh, other uh, boxes right here just like we showed in the uh, that other uh, and the, these all anytime you see these squares together that is a uh, this is the same exact set of notes this is the if this is the key of C, this is B, C, E, F, this is B, C, E, F, this is B, C, E, F. And this gets into the, our uh, teaching of how I visualize a navigation square, this square here, to also get around the fretboard. And you can see the E here, the E, F, then once again, B, C, E, F. They always connect in the corner, and there's a broken box right here um, because of the G to B string shift. So that's another reason why this doesn't really pop out at anybody. And once you get down here, you can think as is above, so is below. I've said that a million times and other times I've shown this exact teaching. And we have the, um, of course, the, then the, the box is straight above. And this one, and there's two rows of this, if you notice. There's this, where it's the, the pair is on the A and D string, G and B string, the broken box. And then the E and the E also have half box. This is our the kind of the trouble, um, kind of the broken row. And then this row here, this angular row here, is the complete row where you have the full box on E and A, full box on D and G. They always connect at this corner right here. That's in a tritone row, a row of tritones. This would be like B and F, right? Yeah, B, F, B, F, B, F best friends I guess I don't know and then but it does break here because of the G and B string shift once again and keeping this uh, hidden in plain sight for everybody so then you get this once again B C E F seven one three and four and that's what I'm gonna leave you with today because we're starting to get into a longer teaching about navigation and um, that's a uh, beyond the scope of this lesson. This lesson was just about um, compelling evidence for why the C major scale is the um, not only used in um, the basics of all the music theory teaching because it has all the, it's using all the whole notes. You can clearly see how the guitar fretboard tuning, even though it's using a low E note, everyone thinks because of that, the guitar has something to do with E and E pentatonic because E, A, D, G, B, E are an E pentatonic shape. You can see it there. It's, it's the, all in the shape right there. However, um, the um, it's actually, I think, um, centered on tune for the key of C, as you can see here. Um, not that it matters. You can move this scale shape up a fret, up two frets, up three frets, up nine frets, up ten frets, whatever you want, and to capture any of the scales from C to C sharp to D to D sharp to E to F to, um, you know, anything like that. F sharp and G and G sharp. A and all the flat notes and everything else. So that's it. I thank you for watching. I'll, um, Pull the camera up to say see you later to everybody. And thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think about this uh, the finding. Um, it doesn't really make a difference to you. It may not, or it may not make a difference to you. It kind of doesn't make too much of a difference to me since, I mean, the guitar, you can just use any scale. But it's just, I thought, fascinating just how this geometry is always lining up and got a new surprise for me every every week that I study something on this uh, with this method so hope it's cool hope it helps you visualize your fretboard more and uh, leave a comment about uh, how it helped you and remember to smash the like button and subscribe thank you guys thanks everyone thanks for my new subscriber Ray S and thank you for all my subscribers who I've never mentioned um, I just happen to have them on the top of my uh, just saw them just the other day um, and I remembered the name see you guys Thank you and have a great day.